Huh? Let me tell you where the call is given. And let me tell you where it is birthed. It is birthed. In fact, somebody can, somebody can tell me. Where is your call birthed? What do you think? It's birth in your heart by the Holy Spirit, but it's in that oneness in relationship with God when nobody is around and you're all by yourself. And God begins to birth into you, birth into you, birth into you, His plan, His purposes, His will. And the thing is, is that we should never be moved by cheers or jeers. You know what jeers are? Boo! Not a good job. Or cheers. Yay! If you feed off of people glorifying you, magnifying you, you know, I, I realize that the Bible says uh, uh, give, give to, what is it? Give honor to honor, thank you. Give honor to honor where honor is due. I understand that. But I don't look for that. You know why? I thank God for it. I appreciate it. But the thing is, because whatever you get here on earth, you don't get it up there. You already got it. If you get this, you already got it. I really believe a lot of the ones are going to get a lot of kudos, if I may say, are the ones that are not seen, are the ones that are praying. They're behind the scenes. They're working ministry behind the scenes. Those are the ones I can get. I'm not saying the ones that have been up there in the fight, but as long as they have the right heart. This is, I always have to check my heart all the time. I always, whenever I give the message, I always have to go and say, I don't have that, I might make sure I don't go and hope somebody says something. I hope somebody says something. At least one person say something that, you know, they got the message and stuff. You know, because there's many times I don't get that at all. And I just put it out. And all I'll do is, just do is this. Father, I'm just satisfied with you just telling me. Well done, son. Well done, son. That keeps us in a place of humility. Because don't ever look for somebody else to give you, to give you like, okay, that's good. That was good. Don't look for it. If you look for it, you'll eventually find it. But then that's all the praise you're going to get. I didn't plan to say this, but I'm saying it. I think the most, most important, because, you know, this is my heart. This is what I feel. I feel that when I come face to face with Jesus, I, I know we're given crowns. I know that. We're given crowns, the crown of life. But it's like I feel like I want to get the crown and just lay it at the, at the feet of Jesus. Say, Jesus, you're the one that is so worthy. And there's a reason why I am here because of your blood. You sacrificed for me. But you know what? I want to live that way while I'm on this earth. I want to live that way. Even if, if there wasn't, if there wasn't all of a sudden a gigantic church that I was ministering at and, and, and just grew tremendously and stuff, you know, if it didn't happen on this side of heaven, I'm all right. Because you know what? I, I'm standing before great people. The Bible says you'll stand before the great. You're great. You know why? You know why you're great? Because Jesus paid the price for you and evidently you are worthy. You were worth it. You were worth it. And so therefore I stand before the great. And I know I've been in ministry for many years, but there are many pastors that stand with status. They won't give you the time of day often. I've talked with them. I've talked, oh, you know, we got this going. They don't want to hear what you got going. They want to tell you what they got going. They turn you off, and I've been around that. 
And I said, okay, well, I know where you're at. But I don't hold a grudge. Because you know why? I've got to guard my heart. You know, they, they got people. I remember I used to go with some preachers, and, and, I, and they would say, well, how are you doing? How's your ministry? And then i say, oh, this is going on. And also, boom, they get sidetracked. Have you ever had that? Hit sidetrack. And I just, you know what I do? I stop talking and back off and smile. I say, okay, all right, it's okay. Because I look at that, and, I, and it's sad because I think they, are, they, they say more than what they really are. Because their identity is what they do and not who they are. Because who you are should be in the, with, with people of all. We're all the same. Jesus died for the world. Praise the Lord. There's people that will not, don't know and will not work with those that we work with every day over at the mission. They don't know what to do with them. Oh, they're just addicts. They're always going to be addicts. Christians are saying that. They'll give their money, but they won't give their time. You know? But I look at that. Don't get upset with them. Keep your heart right. Just love them. Give them Jesus. That's just probably what they need, a little bit more of Jesus. And we, need, we need to have a heart of God. That's the, that's the reason why I love, I love that story of Jesus just before he was going to die. He was going to die. And he goes. And, and he eats with the disciples. And he also eats with Judas. Judas. You know who Judas was, right? He was a traitor. Okay, he was to turn Jesus in. And, and, and he was there. And then he goes, read the, read the scripture, it's in there. And he goes, after they ate, he goes and, and he takes part of his garment off to look like a servant. And he goes and starts washing the disciples' feet, including Judas's. And Peter says, don't do that. He goes, if I don't do this, you're not a part of me. Because what you see me do, yes, I'm your master, I'm your king, I'm your lord. But you know what? You see your master, what he's doing? That's the kind of heart that you are to have. And that's when Peter says, well, they wash everything, <laughs> you know. I'll get in there all the, all the way. And then Judas goes and goes and, and trades them off. So... We will have those around. It is not our responsibility to look around who's our Judas or who's our enemy or who's this or who's that. You know what we do? We love people. We just love them. We pray for people. Amen. Amen. How many different ministries I used to be in? He said, well, Pastor, how come you didn't see this? And how come you didn't see that? I'd get that down south at, at times when we were pastoring. I says, well, I can't see everything. You know, I'm not God. All God's coming to do is minister the word and love on people and pray for them. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. What does that have to do with, with seeking the, the, God's presence? This is what we're talking about. Look at Roman, Romans chapter 14. Romans chapter 14. Seek God's presence is so vital for us to, for God to birth what He intends to do within our lives. Romans 14, 17. For the kingdom of God is not what? It's not eating and drinking. This is our scripture reference. It's not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. These are the things that God has intended us to experience. Turn over to Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14, says this. Get ready. Pursue peace. What does pursue mean? Go after it. Go after it. If you don't got it, then, then you need to go after it. And if you don't got it, that means you're not going after it. Does that make sense? <laughs> See, Jesus already offered us peace. He says, peace I, I give you. Peace I leave you. I leave it. He left. He left himself physically. But he did not leave 
without leaving peace. His peace. So now, it says for us that we are to pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Wow. Did you see that? Did you see that? Say yes or no. I like to see if you're alive. Okay. He says, he says, if we don't seek for peace and pursue holiness, then what happens, we will not see God. We won't see Him. Okay, well, what does that mean? Does that mean I'm not going to ever see God? Okay. I believe that. Now, that's on God. That's not me. But I believe this, that you will never see the character of who God is without peace and without holiness. Holiness is to set ourselves apart and not look like everybody else. Not look like, the, especially not look like the sinner. The person is not a Christian. But I think sometimes we need to come out from among some of the Christians because there are those that say they're Christians and their lifestyle doesn't match up to what they say. See, so holiness means this, that I need to follow after God with my whole heart, my whole mind, my whole body, my whole soul, my whole spirit, everything. Everything that God has given to me doesn't belong to me. That's holiness. Now, when I'm submitted and surrendered to the holiness of God, the, the benefit is I get to live in peace. Amen. Now watch, I'm going to lead you into something. If we don't live this way as Christians, look what else it says. Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble, and by this many become defiled. Whoa. Whoa. So, if I don't operate in peace and the holiness of God, there's a good chance I'm going to take on some bitterness and resentment, roots of bitterness on the inside of me, and it's going to cause a whole lot of issues in my life. I'm going to have problems with people. And I'm going to fall short of the grace of God. See, grace is the ability to, that has been given to us to be able to live a holy life. We can never say we can't live this way. Grace says that we can. All right? Now... Notice it says that the root of any, less the root of bitterness. Root of bitterness. What does the root of bitterness do? It, the roots of bitterness, the root of bitterness does this. It distorts how we view life. It distorts how we view people. It distorts how we communicate, how we hear how, of what people say. It becomes distorted. Hello. Now, if a person has a root of bitterness and vomit comes out of their mouth, it is not your job to change and to teach them because they're not ready for it. You know why? Because they're not pursuing peace. They're not pursuing holiness. So if you, get, if you see other Christians that are not pursuing, pray for them. Love on them. See, what will keep you to love them is to pray for them. See, because if you, if you don't, if you don't love them, you open up the door for bitterness. And bitterness will affect every, every facet of your life. Amen. Amen. It actually releases poison. And there are poison chemicals that affect us uh, physically. 
and it also it also causes sicknesses and diseases walk around and have a spirit of unforgiveness and see what that does huh walk around with a spirit of resentment and holding grudges see what that does to you praise the Lord See, it'll distort everything that you see. It don't matter wherever you go in life, at your jobs. It will distort. And whatever anybody is communicating, you will not be in the same level as their communication. Because you're looking at it and you're perceiving with distorted vision. So what has to happen? That has to get out of the way. You have to acknowledge, yeah, you know what? When you talk about this person, all of a sudden I feel like, yuck. You know what that shows? I got some bitterness in there. I got some resentment in there. I need to get it out. See, I could talk about a particular pastor that I trusted and did a number on me. I could do that and not feel any kind of grudge whatsoever. I could feel the freedom. I could feel the freedom to say it. I just gonna love them and pray for them and, and believe for the best. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. See, see why? I've got to close. See, my job is not is not to guard your heart. That's your job. My job is to guard my heart. I gotta make sure that I don't take take the right take the wrong attitude because what happens is is the attitude of wrong attitude is is negative thoughts that are coming to me that forms a mindset and we establish things upon about people or that person this way or that person that way or that person that way and pretty soon we begin to critique other people and, and lost sight of that we're supposed to examine ourselves See, when you examine yourself, you're going to be safe with God. So it's like when I was going through the, through the years of, it, uh, of issues with my wife and I, the things that we had. You know, I always put the blame, I always put the blame, I always put the blame. But it, I remember when things started turning around, and that was this, is when I stopped doing that. And I begin to take it myself and take responsibility for my own actions. That's when things started turning at that point. Things started turning. See, often we wait for things to turn. Well, if you would act right, if you would talk right, if you wouldn't say that way, if you wouldn't look at me that way, you know, no, 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 no. What I have to look at is this, is that, okay, why do I get upset over this, 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 and that? Because I can't control any of this. But I sure can control me. Christians can go on for living year after year after year and still have poison going through them. And we can also, and I've seen it, we also have Christians that will praise God and glory be to God and be all excited and everything, but their heart has been defiled. Because you know how to do all this. But you're not letting God do what he needs to do. I've seen people that do that. Next day, next next Sunday, they come into church and they're just like somebody just wiped them out. Well, the uh, last Sunday, I just saw them being all excited about Jesus. Now they come to church. Oh, please pray for me. Well, obviously, you got something going on in your heart. Now, if I'm going to pray for you, I need to come in agreement with something. What's going on? Well, so and so, they'll all of a sudden just go to the circumstances. They'll go to their boss, to their job, or something. I said, no, no, no. See, because now you're only giving me your story. Your boss or somebody else, your coworker, is not here, standing here. So I'm, you're, I'm only going to listen to your song and dance. And, and, and I can't make a, a, a good judgment call at that at all. See, so let, let, let's look at something here. Why do you feel the way you feel? Well... Um, 
they'll go put it up towards somebody else. This is what they make me feel. Let's say, for instance, uh, they, they make me feel, they, they disrespect, they disrespect me. They don't appreciate me. Oh, okay. Now we're getting somewhere. How about maybe checking out why you're feeling that? Do you respect you? Do you appreciate you? As a matter of fact, do you love you? Do you like you? See? And there's a good chance. Well, you know, I just get upset when people do this or say that. He says, so what? Do they have a right to be upset and have an opinion? Somebody tell me. Yes. Yeah, they do. <laughs> they have a right. Straighten them up. Kick him. <laughs> yeah, they have a right. Everybody takes a right, but they have, they have that right. Okay? So now, you can go say, well, I have a right to get upset then. <laughs> well, go ahead and take that right and see how good that comes out. Yeah. It never comes out good. See, so this is the reason why I am constantly checking out my heart all the time. To examine myself. If I'm upset about something, i got to examine myself. And what I always find, I always find something that I, I could have, should have, would have. You see? So now what i got to do, i got to take that into my future. So I learn from this to take into my future of what I learn. Not take the poison, the negative part of it, and take that into my future because then it will distort my life. You won't have a good future, I'll tell you that right now. And so that's why the scripture tells us that we are to pursue peace. Now, there are two things that stand in the way of our peace. First of all, I tested last week, and that is worry. 1 Peter 5, 7 says this, to casting all your care. Cast all your cares on him. Why? Huh? Because he cares? Okay. I'm going to cast all my cares on him because he cares. We will not cast our cares on him if we don't trust him. And the reason why we worry is because we, are, we want to be God. We want to sit on the throne. And we want to understand everything. Hello. And you know what? There are some things we're going to understand and there are some things that we're not going to understand. But it should never stop you from growing spiritually. It should never stop you from experiencing the peace of God. See now, God knew that we would experience the cares of life, the worries of life. God, God knew that. So he tells us to cast all our cares, all of them, every single bit. The moment, here, here that's, this is the reason why you have to examine yourself. The moment you start feeling, feeling even a little anxious, then you got to look, okay now, I've taken on some cares. I've taken on something that I shouldn't because my emotions are reacting to it and I doesn't feel good. It feels negative. See, because if you don't do that, it'll change your personality. How's that change your personality? You'll get a mood. You'll be moody. Man, what got into you? You get snappy. Man, I just get away from you. And some people will take it a little further and they'll, they'll go, you bank, you bank, you know, get away. It's like, whoa. See, what happened is that now you responded to what they're feeling. So instead of guarding yourself, you took on what they got. Wow. See, what you got to do, if they're acting ugly, if they're acting moody, okay, what you got to do is give them their space. I'm here if you need me. Praise God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Shantala Masakaya. You know, just stay in the spirit. 
then if they want to bring you in because they get irritated with you because you're acting that way and they know they should be the same way so misery likes company so they go over there and they kind of provoke you well I remember you and they start bringing up some of your past uh, and, and humanly all of a sudden you won't go into a defense mode that's not me why, why do you need to defend that why, why do you need to defend something that is not you? Amen. Evidently, if you have to defend it, that means it's still you. Amen. And you need the cross to cleanse that from you. The blood to get it off of you. Praise the Lord. So that's the reason why we defend ourselves because we, we, we believe that of what they're saying against us. We believe that about ourselves. Because why would you defend a lie? See, that, that's not, see, that's a lie. I don't, I don't need to defend, defend that. They're telling a lie. See, the truth is, I've been delivered. The truth is, I've been forgiven. The truth is, I get to walk in peace and the joy and the holiness of the Lord and His righteousness. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. See, that's the, that's the truth. Praise the Lord. That's the truth. And so that's the reason why we have to stand firm in the truth. And so when people talk, let them talk. Just guard your heart. Guard, guard your heart. The Bible says guard your heart in Proverbs 4. With all diligence, prerogative flows life. Life. I know this is not a shout message, but you know what? It's a teaching message to teach you how to, how to, be, how to grow so you can shout. Where can you shout? Shout victory. So when you, can, when you can really go to shout and get excited and praise God and worship God and all that, it's real. Amen. See, because you can go out, not just have it in the church, you actually go out of these doors and just, you're shouting the victory. Praise God. You got a, you got a spring in your step. You know, you got a spring in your step. I mean, you're all right. Glory be to God. You got peace of God. Now look at look at what you got to do. Philippians 4 6. Philippians 4 6 says this. Be anxious. For what? Nothing. Nothing, 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 nothing. Zero. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication. Let your requests be made known unto God. And if you do that, that's casting your cares. That's how you cast your cares. If you have cares, you go to God in prayer. And it says this, And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. It will guard your heart from becoming bitter and resentful. Now notice, everything that concerns you concerns God. Why not share it with Him? How, what kind of a prayer are we to have? If you look at it, the prayer of supplication and thanksgiving. What's the prayer of supplication and thanksgiving? Well, the picture of supplication is to supplicare. So supplication is, is with intents. You're bowing yourself down with intensity. See, with a spirit of humility, you'll cast all your cares. A spirit of pride holds, that, holds the cares and worries. That's a spirit of pride. Spirit of pride says, I can handle it. I can take it. I'm not going to go through this, but I can take it. No, 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 no. You're going to be all by yourself, and it's going to cost you your flesh. It's going to cost you your mind. It's going to cost you your emotions. It's going to cost you. It's costing millions of Americans today. Since they came, as a, in general, they kicked God out, they're on, sitting on the throne of their lives and trying to handle things that belong to God. Things happen in life, but don't go and try to understand it. It's a place where the enemy wants to place you in and to bombard you with all kinds of doubting thoughts instead of faith. 
So what do I got to do? If I'm feeling this in my body, that means I've gotten one step outside of God's will. And I need to I need to put this bring this into account into my life and I and I need to go to God in prayer with supplication and here with thanksgiving. What is thanksgiving? What is what does thanksgiving mean now? I appreciate. So what did, what did you just, just do when you offered your request before God? What did you just do? You thanked Him, but you haven't got it yet. You haven't got it yet. But you thank Him anyways. God, I don't feel it, God. You know what? I'm going through, God. You know, I feel this pressure, God. You know, I don't understand that. But you know what? I'm going to trust you, God, and I'm just going to thank you. Wow. I'm going to have a th heart of thanksgiving. Yes. See, when you start complaining, you got resentment. Yeah. You don't have a heart of thanksgiving. We have a lot of Americans uh, don't appreciate the things that America has to offer, the conveniences of life. We don't appreciate it. We complain, complain, complain. There's a lot of complainers. They're not, they haven't even settled with whoever was voted the president of the United States. They haven't settled. He's going to have to fight, not only fight the enemies, fight those behind him. Amen. Never in the history of America have we seen that, ever. They don't concede. They're going to fight. Wow. Unappreciative. Americans don't appreciate it. Watch what's going to happen. God may, sounds like he's silent of all these years, hundreds of years. Heaven is going to speak very, very, very soon. It's been pretty consistent through the scriptures. He comes just right when it is dark. God always shows up. Amen. Praise the Lord. This is the reason why we got to get ourselves ready. We got to get a, get ourselves ready. We got to get our hearts right. That's why holding on to. See, I'm not going to hold on to anything. In case you're wondering, I, I, I'm a little older. Don't say nothing. <laughs> I'm older than many of you. Okay. I don't have a whole lot of time to hold grudges. To hold resentment. Now that doesn't mean that because some of you are me young whippersnappers <laughs> that you got a whole lot of time because you know what? Death comes knocking <laughs> any door. Any door. Death has no respect in the persons. All right. So you know what? I would think it's a good idea to keep my heart clean and under the blood of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You got to do it. Amen. God, in, in Isaiah 26, 3, it says, God will keep you in perfect peace, whose mind is what? It's fixed on him, stayed on him. To stay also is to commit himself. To commit to what? Trust you. Lord, I see a whole lot of chaotic situations. And this is, this is the attitude that I take. I say, God, I just stay in your presence. I just stay with you, Lord. I'm going to just feed myself off of your word. I'm going to feed myself off in your presence, Lord. And the things, what is it that you want me to do? I will do whatever you want me to do. I'm, ac I'm accessible to you, Lord. Whatever you want, I'm here. I constantly do this and I bring this before my God. You're my daddy. You've never disappointed me. You didn't come at the times I wish, but you know what? You never disappoint. Just those times when I wish, this is what happens. I, my faith got stronger. Because during those times when I looked like it didn't, you didn't come through, guess what? I've learned to trust you. 
So you know what? I'm going to stay fixed on you. That means this. If I'm fixed on trusting God, I will not see the circumstances of life. See, because I'm focused on the eternal, not on the temporal. Amen. See, because the temporal passes on. You, you, you and I will never see tomorrow. I mean, yesterday. Oh, wait. <laughs> tomorrow. We're all going. <laughs> Where are we going? <laughs> you guys didn't catch it right away. For... But I did. It echoed in me. <laughs> You guys, we, you know what? We will never see yes, uh, make sure, yesterday. <laughs> yesterday. We'll never see it again. It's gone forever. See, what we have to do is that we need to, whatever happened yesterday, we need to fix today. If we lost focus last, last week, then what we need to do is to get back on focus this week. If you go and you're going somewhere and you're on your way on a car from L.A. to go to, to, go to New York and all of a sudden you end up in Wyoming, you know, and it's like, wow, what do you need to do? Get back. Get back. New York is still there. You just got. You, you, you just went off. Don't get upset at everybody. If anybody, get upset with yourself. You didn't trust God. God already paid the path for you. Which you, in order to walk the path that God has given, that has already predestined before you, even before the foundation of the world, what I need to do is develop a closeness with God and, and trust God and stay focused upon Him so I don't miss the route. Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, say, Pastor, have you missed a route at times? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I can't go and tell you, man, I, every decision I made was just perfect. I can't do that. But I learned from it, so I don't do it again. Have I made decisions? Yeah, one of the decisions that I made was it had nothing to do with ministry. I said, God, I was trying to get out of ministry, trying to get out of ministry. I'm going to go into the counseling field. I'm not just going to counseling field. get my degree and all that stuff. Go in there, go in there. And maybe I'm going to have clients and stuff. And you know what? God accommodated me and ministry. And I was, for, for a few years, outside of being a pastor that God had originally called me into. And it didn't feel good. Because that which I was seeking, I thought that was going to be satisfying. And there was a longing on the inside of me. Just like this. It was just gnawing and gnawing and gnawing and gnawing. And, and, and my wife would see it. I, would, I was just unsettled, just gnawing. And I said, okay, God. But see, I had to get right with God. I said, God, I'm sorry. You do, you change things. I don't know how you're going to do it. It looked totally impossible. I don't know how you're going to do it. I don't know how you're going to put me back with ministry. I'm up here in the mountains and I don't really know. People don't know me or nothing. And I'm an introvert. I'm not an extrovert knocking down doors. I'm an introvert. So now you're going to have to make this happen. And guess what? It happened. I says, wow. Okay. And there's some other things that are out there too that God's going to make happen also. And I'm just waiting for the right timing. One thing about it, as the age I am today, I have learned one thing. There's always a season. There is a season. Not our season. Because our season can often operate out of emotion. And we make a decision out of emotion. Did you know that emotions and spirit are so closely related? Huh? Because, you know, what I feel. Well, wait, wait, which one, which one is it? You know, do you feel, do you sense? Which one? What is it? Okay, often emotions are, are made because of circumstances and spirit is not moved by circumstances. Spirit will always put us in the season, in the right season. Now, have I done that? No. Why are you teaching it then? It's because I don't want you to go through what I went through. 
I find out it's a whole lot better for waiting for the season. Because you know what? You can waste a whole lot of time too. And heartache. And relationships. And so now I wait for the season. In order to wait for the season, I got to trust God. I got to stay fixed on Him and walking in peace. Because when I look back, when I got out of seasons, peace wasn't there. My emotions were there, and I spoke myself into a decision by my, my, by my emotions. But my emotions was, was describing the uneasiness. The, the uneasiness in my life at that time as I was describing I was, I was grumbling without realizing I was grumbling inside and so my emotions took it from there and then I tried to tell my wife he says okay well let me t I talk her into it and she would she would but thank God she never left me See, because I could, I come up with a talk. I said, well, look at it. It sounds like it. feels like it. Do, 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 do. And then come to find out, it's not. And it's like, oh, my God. But I learned. One thing about it, God doesn't let us go. Thank God. He doesn't let us go. So now that I'm older, I'm not going to waste time. I'm not going to waste time. If you're younger, don't waste time. Amen? Amen? Don't waste time. All right. Now, here's the other part that's not going to allow us to experience God's peace. And that is permitting a lifestyle of sin. Permitting a lifestyle of sin. Isaiah 59, 1 to 2, if you may turn there. Isaiah 59, 1 to 2 says this Behold the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save nor his ear heavy that it cannot hear you know sometimes you feel like well, is, God, is God hearing me? you know I mean it seems like he's not doing what I think he should do Verse 2 gives an answer. But your iniquities have separated you from your God. And your sins have hidden his face from you. So that he will hear you. But everybody else thinks he should. I could live any way I want to live and, you know, God will hear me. I could make all kinds of mistakes and, you know, God will hear me. Huh? See, we got to stick to the Word. That's why we got to examine ourselves. So he says, he says, the Lord's hand, is it shortened? Answer that. Is it shortened? Is God's hand shortened? Say no. Okay. That it cannot say. Nor, delayed reaction, yeah, I know. Nor his ear heavy that it cannot hear. Is it? No. No, no. So the problem is not with God to not hear, all right, and not answer. The problem, what I need to do is look at me. I says, am I walking holy? Is there some iniquity? Is there something that I'm holding? Am I holding somebody hostage? Am I holding my spouse hostage? Huh? Am I holding my job hostage? I got to check that out because it's sin. He says, your sins have hidden his face from you. So that, watch how it says it. You see that? So that he will not hear. Who's, who's making the choice? It created that, but then what, God, what does God have to do now? He has to accommodate our choice. 
right? You cannot go and say, well, you know what? I know you're sinning, and I know you're, re you're a rebel, and I know you're resisting me, and, and I know you're not spending that time with me, so you know what? It's okay. It's okay. I'll answer your prayer. If God did that, right here, God would no longer be God. He'd be double-minded. And double-minded is, is, is the uh, devil. But thank God he's not the devil. He's God. As a matter of fact, what's attached to his name is Almighty God. Almighty God means that he's the supreme. There's no other God. No other God. Why is America bringing in other gods coming in? And we got to give them, we got to give them audience and stuff like that and bring it into our schools. Now. Why, why is that? God's, God's word distinctly says they're going to be thorns in your side. They're going to be a hindrance to serving the, the eternal, real God, the almighty God. Sure is quiet here. So now what does it tell us to do in James chapter 4, verse 8? This is draw near. Draw near to God. And he will what? Okay, now who does the drawing first? Okay, it's us drawing to him. The reason why we draw to him, well, in fact, the way we need to draw to him is by faith. Is by faith. I don't understand what's happening in my life, but you know what? By faith, I'm coming to you because I need to know you so I can stay in that route yes. that you predestined for my life to fulfill. So now he goes, he says, draw near to me and you will draw, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Well, that's a strong word, aren't they? Huh? You sinner. Who's a sinner? <laughs> that was a fast one. You know, I thank God for Billy Graham and all and well, all that he's done. He had a revelation of, of salvation. Totally. He had it. Boom. He had a good heart. Good heart. Humble heart. Couldn't find nothing. He was squeaky clean. Good. Praise God. I did hear him say one thing. But you know what? It doesn't keep us out at all. It's just that we got to look at everybody else that has revelations that God gives a piece of the puzzle. One of the things that was said was, I'm a sinner. Okay. A sinner is one who, when you, when you look at the description, a sinner is one who habitually sins. Now, if you're lining up to the Bible, the Bible says that don't sin no more. So if you have, see, so don't, let, don't, don't let sin have dominion over you. So that means this. That means that a, that a Christian can live a sinless life if he lives by way of the Spirit. Now, if he has a flesh and all his emotions involved, you got a good chance you're going to sin. And then uh, and sin will put you into slavery. And then when you walk in the slavery of sin, what happens is this, is that you no longer can experience peace and joy. Okay, so now, what is it that's going to keep us there? God's grace in righteousness. What does God's grace say? God's grace says that I am the righteousness 2 Corinthians 5.21 I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. What are you? It didn't say I was a sinner. So what is he referring here to about sin, the sinner? A sinner is one, is this. Let's say he's talking to the Christian. A Christian can be called a sinner when he continues to sin he turns his back on righteousness. And he goes on sinning. And he goes back and smelling and doing all the things that he's always done before. But he says, I'm a Christian. I go to church. But then he goes in behind the scenes and he, and he yells at his wife. And he, and, and, and he cusses her down and, and demeans her and stuff. Or vice versa. You know? It's like, and he comes to church. Praise God. Hallelujah. And then he goes back like that. That's a sinner. See, he doesn't see his ways. 
he, so now what does he say? What does he say? He says, come on, if you're going to draw near to me, so I can draw near to you, then what you do need to do is cleanse your hands. Hands represents this, the works of man, what you do in your life. Cleanse your hands. You sinners and purify, what is it? Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Now when you see somebody live out there and then you have them come in here and they live a different life, that's called double-minded. See, I'd sort of be embarrassed right now if I was talking to stuff and I and in front of my wife. And she knows, she knows me, she knows that I would, that I probably, you know, that I've done this, I've yelled at her, and I've gotten angry at her, and I've been in her face, and, and I've put her against the wall and yelled at her in her face and stuff, and then come to church and says, you know, praise God, purify our hearts, and you're double-minded, yeah, yeah, you all double-minded, not me, you know, type of thing. <laughs> Wow, she'd be, I, I would have to be ministering like this. I, I couldn't see her. She'd have dagger eyes at me. Yeah, yeah. See, that's why it's easy for me to do this because, you know what, what I, how you see me to here is how I am at home. If I respect you, I'm respecting her. If I honor you, I'm going to honor her. If I'm going to be cordial towards you, I'm going to be cordial towards her also. I says, you know why? It's not because of my, just my wife. It's because I have a God who watches every move I make Amen. and everything that I think. Amen. There's nothing that I can't hide. I can't hide. There's nothing I, hidden from Him. You see, so that's the reason why. See, so if I, when I talked about getting upset and angry, I mean, let me tell you, I don't know if you ever saw that Courageous, I don't know if it was a Courageous or something, forget which one, when it first started off, he got his wife, put her against the wall, and just yelled at her like that. Huh? No, I don't think it was prayer room. It was, no, I think it was another one. I think it was the fireman. Fireproof. That's probably what it is. And then when we saw that, the movies, we went to Edward's movies and we saw that. My wife and I were sitting there. And when that happened like that, we both turned to each other. Because remember that? That happened at one time before. That was miserable. Hey, we were Christians, so don't look at me real holy now. <laughs> you know, and all of a sudden you become holy when I, when, I, when I put myself out there. You know, but I'm letting you know how the difference is, is, is that there's a big difference. And I love it. And as a result, God gives me his peace. He gives me his joy. So I get to walk around Monday, not just Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Every day, just walk around. Just praise God. Hallelujah. I mean, I'm not going around saying, oh, yeah, hallelujah. No, no, no. I, I just, I got the peace in here. Amen. Some chaotic situation happens, and I back off. I tend to back off, and I watch, and I observe. Okay, how, sh how, how should this be handled? See, if you're a type of person that sees things happening all of a sudden, and then you go, well, we got to do it, then you're, mo you're not moving in the spirit. You're moving in the flesh. Because you weren't that way just a few moments ago. But the environment got you going. So what it did, it got your senses going, your flesh going. And you're going to make mistakes when you do that. I guarantee you. You will make mistakes when you move by your environment. And you make a decision by your environment. You will, be, you will make mistakes. I've done it. I've done it over and over again. I don't want to do it no more. Starting today, no. <laughs> so therefore, I am not going to get entangled. The Bible tells us, and let me just give you one, one more verse, uh, that to stand fast, therefore, in the liberty of which Christ has made us free, and don't be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2 says this, Let us lay aside every weight, every weight, and every sin, that surrounds us. Let's lay it aside. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. So what do we got to do? 
You got to stand fast in the truth. You got to know the truth. Stand fast in that truth. That means this. If you don't stand, what's happening, standing fast means that you're going to have opposition. So you have to make a decision. I've got to stand fast to the truth. Now, I must walk in that truth, live in that truth, so I don't get entangled with what's going on around me. Now, I'm going to, I'm going to lay aside every weight and every sin, and I'm going to lay it aside because you know what? It's distracting. I'm not going to let that distract me. I'm not going to let that event distract me. I'm not going to let what that person said distract me. I'm not going to let my circumstances distract me. I'm not going to let sickness and diseases distract me. I'm not going to let nobody in this world distract me. Situations, nothing, distract me. Because I don't want to get entangled with the affairs. You either, you, you, you're remembered by two things. You're either, you, you either become a part of a problem or you become a solver, a solution to the problem. That's what you will be remembered, those two things. Which one are you going to be remembered by? Praise the Lord. Are you going to remember that you're a peacemaker? Okay. If you said yes, then then spouses squeeze them. <laughs> That's cheating, right? No, don't do it on purpose. Just the thing is, is that the enemy just heard you, and he's going to create a circumstances when you go out into society, and you're going to be squeezed. And he wants, you know why? Because he wants to see what you're really made up of and to see if that word really got inside of you. Now, I'm trying to help you so you don't think that this is not obtainable. It is obtainable. But you have to choose to pursue the peace of God and live in the holiness of God's word because God will continually cleanse us so we can walk in the peace of God. And when you got peace, you can see things a whole lot clearer. You're not disrupted and you're not distorted. You can see it for what it is. And then you can come with a solution because God will give you his wisdom and knowledge to be able to know what needs to happen. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.